may not mean all the same thing that we tend to mean um, in a traditional way. Uh, in a traditional sense, it also, of course, is a training and attention, just like concentration is to stabilize attention. You could say mindfulness is to refine attention so that um, when we are perceiving something, our perception is not so distorted by bias. It's not, it's not so undone by the habits of our mind. Um, to see bleakly, to see with grasping, to see with projection. You know, I'm an angry person and I always will be, or something like that. Uh, but to, to connect more fully to something as it is, and what's important about that is not just that it, it's a much better way to live, you know, more connected, more present, more aware, uh, with a greater sense of immediacy and appreciation, but it's also the platform for insight. You know, say if something comes up, an emotional state, for example, and we're struggling against it and we don't like it and we're judging it and we're trying to push it away, there's not going to be a lot of learning that goes on. And at the same time, if we are submerged and overcome and defined by something, there's not enough space to really take a look at it. So there's not going to be a lot of learning that goes on. And so. Uh, the key role of mindfulness is the is serving as it's like the engine for insight, for understanding, for really seeing clearly in a personal sense, um, connections between things, patterns, and so on. But most fundamentally, in a universal sense, to see, for example, the changing nature of everything. This physical sensation, this emotional state, whatever it is, that seems so rigid, unyielding, solid, substantial, forever. When we actually look at it, it's moving, it's flowing, it's shifting, it's coming, it's going. It's arising, it's passing away, even if it arises right back in that moment. It's like the, the whole seeming substantiality and solidity it just dissolves because that's how things are, not because we're trying to force them into that. And so it's a very different perception about everything that we go through. And this is one of the reasons that they say mindfulness does not depend on the object that it's looking at because anything will share this characteristic of constantly changing. I mean, needless to say, if somebody handed any one of us a menu as we walked in here and said, would you like to have a deeper insight into the truth of change through observing bliss or through observing knee pain? <laughs> <laughs> Probably we would all say, I'll take the bliss, you know? <laughs> but we don't get to choose, <laughs> unfortunately. And in the end, from the perspective of the meditation, it doesn't matter. It's that insight into constantly changing nature of things, the insubstantiality of things, arising and passing away, as one example of a universal characteristic. That's what's most important, because that's what's freeing. Then we live differently. So one of the great challenges of meditation practice, which brings me back to that whole comment, I failed at it. I couldn't do it right. Um, is is really it's it's important even if you're not going to have this entire context in play uh it's very important to have some understanding i think about as they would say in the text what is the path and what is not the path <coughs> otherwise we we suffer so much like oh no i'm thinking no one else in the room is thinking. <laughs> They're all sitting here in bliss. They're all sitting here bathed in brilliant white light. Or maybe it's golden light. I forget what color light you're supposed to have. It doesn't matter because I don't have it. You know, they don't have it. Maybe they are thinking, but they're thinking beautiful thoughts. They're thinking spiritual thoughts. They're thinking such loving thoughts. I'm the only one who's sitting here thinking about cactus. <laughs> you know, why am I thinking about that? I don't even have a garden. I'm not going to plant anything, but here I am thinking, I'm so stupid, I'm so bad, right? That's the normal trajectory, very much so. And to realize we're not 
We're not so fixated on what's coming up. We're really interested in how we're relating to what's coming up, paying attention in a certain way, not being so caught. And you realize you can't have the wrong experience. It might be painful. It might not be what you check off on the menu. It might be challenging, but it's not wrong ever in terms of the meditative process. That's an important understanding to have. So we're not heaping blame on ourselves all of the time. So that's just one example of that. And so it's almost like out of that uh, tremendous and growing compassion for ourselves, it's worth having some understanding of, of just the process. What is the path, what's not the path? And then we can bring it to life in, in our own practice. Okay, so why don't we sit for just a few minutes and. I don't know if any of you are unfamiliar with meditation, but I'll just guide you through. Did you have more batteries? Yeah, this works again. Okay. Thank you. Are you sure? Do you have oh, I did a second ago. No, I didn't leave it on. Yeah. Yes. Nice. Nice. Thank you. Microphones are rising and passing away. Everything <laughs> arises and passes away. I need you on the road, too. What am I going to do for some other state? OK. So uh, one of the fundamental exercises, I'm sure many of you are familiar with it, uh, is just to settle your attention on the feeling of the breath. And, and that's the natural flow of the in and out breath in the system. You don't have to try to make it deeper or different. So you can sit comfortably. When we talk about balance, we talk about cultivation, it means balance. Not straining, not struggling. And they say right away there can be a certain amount of balance just in our posture. You want to have some energy, but you don't want to be like really stiff and uptight. You want to be relaxed but not so relaxed, <laughs> that you just like way slumped over, like you couldn't care less. So you just find that place where you feel that sort of balance. And you can close your eyes or not, however you feel most at ease. <coughs> Sometimes even before we get to the breath, we just start by listening to sound, whether it's the sound of my voice or other sounds.